Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Andrew mentioned, I'll be presenting this talk on behalf of Professor Yonglin, which is a pity he, who couldn't make it for today's conference. Um, I'll be talking on PBRC grain research at Murdoch University, uh, all related to post-harvest technology. <clears throat> Uh, points which I'll be covering in my presentation would be post-harvest biosecurity capacity building projects. Project team, our industry partners, our industry collaboration, in international collaboration, PBRC project from 2009 to 2018, and R&D outcome from each project. Now, projects has been challenging, but I think the most challenging role is to do this nine years of research in nine minutes. Now, under this capacity building project, the team started in 2009 when Professor Yonglin was selected by DEFA, now, now called DEPERD, uh, to establish this post-harvest biosecurity in Western Australia. Um, and as Pat Collins, he did a very good job single-handed. Uh, single uh, and at that time, Yonglin was second, seconded to Murdoch University. Just three years back, when our capacity was completely developed, he is now fully to Murdoch University. Um, uh, Yonglin was supported by myself, James, and Bob Dew, which uh, he's there, which is our core team. Apart from this, we have six to seven other staff. So we covered the whole expertise of entomology, fumigant chemistry, chemical ecology, analytical chemistry, diagnost uh, diagnostic, fumigation, etc. We have, under this project, we've got 14 PhDs and four who has completely finished. We got industry partnership with CBH, Viterra, Grain Corp, Cytec, um, Sunrise, Ruslovka, which is Indian manufacturer company, Linde Gas, Chevron, Citrus Australia, Deeper, ACIR, Crawford, HIA, um, uh, and UNIDO. With HIA right now, we got the project of capacity building for Metfly post-harvest disinfestation, which I am looking after. We have done some quite good international collaboration, and then under this umbrella, we got uh, our grain projects. So the core value of the team is committed to meeting global uh, post-harvest challenges, through innovation and um, impaired, uh, and impaired thinking, research in food safety, food quality, for premium grain and future sustainable development, and then committed to post-harvest stored grain protection for maintaining market access and safeguarding trade, which is our key word. Uh, our lab is uh, NATA and ISO accredited, Support with, supported by Chevron, so any data generated in this lab can be used as um, in reg, uh, re, um, for APVMA regulatory uh, requirements. Through this uh, project from last um, eight years, we have done some international collaboration um, with, uh, with China, which is on prevention of management of exotic species, invasive species between Murdoch University and Chinese Academy of Agriculture Science, quarantine and phytosanitary required diagnostic and treatment, which is between Murdoch and CAIQ. CAIQ is um, Chinese Inspection and Quarantine Department. Uh, recently, we have also signed um, collaboration with South Korea Quarantine Department. Then post-harvest grain biosecurity and food quality, which is between CRC, Murdoch, and um, Academy of State Administration Grain, which is the major bulk um, uh, grain handling uh, um, company in China. So you can see we cover from the whole pre to post-harvest range till the food comes to our plate. Now, starting with the project, we started with use of uh, low oxygen nitrogen development technology. 
We started this project with the um, um, initial laboratory trials using most of the state, uh, stored grain pest for treatment at 97 to 99% for two weeks to four weeks. Uh, and we used both adult as well as internal stage of insect. Adults could be killed within two weeks' time, but for internal stage, we have to prolong the treatment to four weeks. We can maintain the quality for three months. And once we got a successful laboratory trials, we moved on to the field trial in collaboration with Ming New Group and Doug Clark Field in Western Australia. Uh, uh, we used two types of generator, pressure swing adsorption technique and membrane nitrogen generator in, in these trials. But finally, we decided for the membrane nitrogen generator at it was more efficient, can easily achieve 99.5% purity of nitrogen in a more effective manner. And based on that generator, we developed this mobile facility which can directly be taken on to the silo or grain terminals and can be hooked to, the, to any type of silo and can do the treatment. We, <coughs> we have done Quinana grain terminal and um, Albany grain terminal trials. Now, as I mentioned, using nitrogen, the holding period is two to four weeks, which is not acceptable by industry. They want something to be quick. So, we started another project, which is combination of nitrogen and phosphine. And in this, we used bo both resistant and susceptible uh, strain. You can see this blue line is air, which is 78% nitrogen. The red is 98% nitrogen. And 95% nitrogen is the green bar. For example, this is TC and this is RD, both susceptible and resistant strain. So, just taking one example in one concentration, for 100 ppm phosphine, it's ideally taken four days to kill the insect. But when we increase the nitrogen to 90%, we reduce the time to two. And when we further increase the nitrogen to 95%, we reduced it to one. So we can see it's the, we reduce the holding period from four to, with that combination of nitrogen and phosphine. By this, we did not only reduce the holding time, we, um, our cost is also low, and at the same time, most of the silos are not well sealed. In that case, where we can maintain 90 to 95% nitrogen is good enough for a com with the combination of phosphine. Now, these are the four projects which are related to synthetic amorphous silica dust, which gave birth to Devron. Um, this is, uh, um, we did 17 synthetic amorphous silica candidates were selected, out of which were uh, um, uh, studied, and then two were selected based on their efficacy. One was hydrophilic and one was hydrophobic dust. The hydrophilic dust was food grade, is already registered for use in coffee, salt, and sugar as a desiccant, um, as an anti-desiccant. Uh, it can manage both uh, resistant and susceptible strain, can do long-term protection even for one year, and is has a good potential for both sealed and unsealed storage. We did some field trial, and you can see Michael Robinson was directly involved with CBH people at yachting field trial. Now this is how the dust get onto the surface of the insect. This upper, this one is tribolium, and this is rhizopertha. This is the dorsal surface and the ventral part. And when I did the scanning electron microscope, you can see these dust particles, which are at the posterior region of the insect body. Uh, now coming for ethyl formate plus nitrogen fumigation, this project is funded in co uh, with CRC and Chevron. It, their main um, concern was the fumigation of uh, containers when it goes to Barrow Island. Methyl bromide cannot be used. Phosphine has a holding time and OHNS issue. So we thought of ethyl formate in which we generated um, on flammable, on site generation of non inflammable ethyl formate vapors. Ethyl formate is a very good fumigant. It has a, a high, um, it has no OHNS issue, is very effective for vegetable, dried fruits, nuts, and grains. 
but the problem is of flammability at high concentration, which we have to tackle. So that's why we use nitrogen in combination with ethyl formate. With this, our holding period was reduced because we can do in-transit fumigation and was also safe for ethyl formate workers and Barrow Island environment. We also did, uh, this is how our actual system started, the preliminary one, and that's how we modified it to this truck. This is boot pit hygiene treatment with ethyl formate in collaboration with CBH. Now my final project. Um, this is with the um, snails. Snail is a big concern for um, grain industry. As you can see, grain industry directly, so much concern and concentration. Earn is looking, where is Earn? For, for snails. And this is CBH and Murdoch people um, uh, collecting some snails. Here the main challenge is when the, the, snail, the snails contaminate our grain, which are for export, through feed. They get harvested with the grain and then contaminate the stock. And most of the countries do not take such type of grain which have even a single live snail. The challenge is it's, it's um, methyl bromide and phosphine are not, are ineffective. So rather than using any new fumigant because it got a registration problem, we thought of a combination of phosphine and nitrogen in this case. So what we used, we used 400 ppm of phosphine with 90% um, nitrogen. And we treated it for seven days, 14 days, and 28 days. This is control. After treatment, we took out the snails. This is the control. The snails are all over the box. This is 14-day treatment in which we put a circle and transferred all the treated snail. And the one which moved the circle was considered alive. And this is 28-day treatment. As you can see, none of the snail moved. In snail, the mortality assessment is again a challenge because in real practice, the inspector squish the snail, and if it, the liquid oozes out, they declare it is alive. But sometimes the enzymatic activity is still there, even if the snail is actually dead. So the mortality assessment was a bit of a challenge for us, and we are also working on finding out some better way to assess their mortality using some starch or enzyme interaction. Um, now, as, uh, now you, from last nine years, our all research has been in collaboration with industry and all industry-related research. And we hope to do the same transitional in future. Thank you. Thank you.